Wayne Stevenson, 30 years in college. The little 30, yeah. Be 31 in November. When you think about that. I don't lot. I, I don't think about that a lot. Why don't you think about that? Because uh, I think time for reflection is like near the end. I don't think I'm near the end. And uh, it goes by so quickly. I mean, when I first started doing this, I said five years from now, if I look up at all I have been in my life to stand up comedy, I would be very happy. Now 30 years, so I should be really happy. I should be jumping up and down. And so, 30 years in comedy, what's changed? Or is it the same? Uh, the subjects that people talk about, a lot have changed. What, what type of change in subject? Well, uh, well, I don't know if I, I don't even know if I know what I'm talking about. Uh, what I mean, the first change I thought about was back in the early 80s when I started all comedians wore sport jackets with the pushed up and jeans and tennis shoes of some sort. Um, and everything was about Reagan. And now, uh, I think the people talk about a lot of different, a lot of different subjects more than, you know, just the, the main topic they were hitting on back in when I started. But see, I, I, like I said, I don't know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about that because I don't do a lot of, spend a lot of time reflecting or stuff like that. So you're in the moment. I'm in this moment right now. And now I'm in this moment right now. And that moment has passed. <laughs> Is there something about comedy that you, is an industry that you wish was better that could be Oh yeah, we can get paid better. I, that's been my main thing since I started doing it. But, um, Why do you think the pay is less? Because club owners know for a fact, undisputed fact, that comedians are perform next to nothing just to get stage time. And they take advantage of that so bad, it hurts my heart to think about it. That's the main problem I have with this owner. But he's the one. Yeah, he's the one who left me. <laughs> when, I, when I brought up the idea of doing the show October 2nd, he was buying with it from the mentioner. And I heard another comment doing a one man show. And I just said, hey, I want to do one of those. He said, fine. Next thing you know, October 2nd is the day. October 2nd, comedy seller. Is... Nope. Village Underground. Wow. Comedy seller. That's the new club which is right around the corner from this one. And from the stage, the stage is set up exactly the same way around the corner. They got that table over there has flowers on it when the show is. They got one over there. That, uh, uh, the brick wall, the, the wood below. The stage is pretty much identical, but it's twice as big as this one. And it's more square instead of ball. I, I love it. I have a good time. And so who's going to be on the show with you so far? Daryl Hammond from Saturday Night Live. And Greer Barnes from uh, Chappelle Show. And uh, uh Hopefully, if it goes well, I want to do a monthly William Stevens and Friends. And then eventually uh, bring music into it like the old Funk Night days. That's what I thought about when I thought about this one, but I think it's going to be, it takes more, uh, I don't know, need more time to make sure everything is like I want it. If I'm going to bring a band, the comics, you know, it's so easy to just show up. They don't need equipment. Enough. What makes you laugh? What makes me laugh? Uh, hmm. I don't know. But I know when I know something's funny, and I laugh. If it's funny, I laugh. They, they give me about this at the poker game all the time. But they'll be laughing or something, and I'm not laughing because I don't think it's funny. You know, maybe, it's not because I didn't think of it. 
is because I don't think it's funny. And they have a, uh, a penchant to bring up stuff that had already happened and rehashing old jokes. And I'm like, okay, we'll go with this again. That happened at the game this week a lot. They were bringing Let's back a lot. Let's talk about this poker game. It's been happening for over 20 years. Um, somewhere around, nobody, nobody seemed to be able to pinpoint when we started, but the general consensus is 20 years. And how do you start? It started by, I think, Eddie Grill, who was the host. Uh, and I was working around the corner here at a place called the Village Gate, which is now closed. And uh, the subject of polar came up, and he said, you know, do you want to try to get a game together? And I said, sure. And we just started asking other comic friends who wanted to play, and Colin Quinn, Sarah Silverman, Louis C.K., and some of the first, Dennis Reagan. And uh, we played Sunday night, 11 o'clock to 5 And then we'd go around the corner to this all-night dining. And whoever won would buy breakfast for everybody. Else. And then at some point, maybe five, six years in, we changed to Monday nights because that was the night that comedians don't work the most. The slowest night of the week. So we chose Monday. And then we started at nine and then we moved back. And people started getting married and having kids. And it's so, it, the game is so much different. Um, and I almost was ready to give it up because, because of these people sit there and it's like, it's your bet, huh? Okay. It's your bet, huh? The whole game. And I told him, I said, actually, I didn't write a hammer down the last two weeks because I was pissed about it. And what I had written was so mean. <laughs> so finally, um, but before the game, this past Monday, I said, I'm notice to let people know what the game is. And I said, P.S. If smartphones continue to be part of the game, I will be leaving girl. And it turned out that people use them less, a lot less. How do you think technology has interfered with a comedian doing his thing on stage or her thing on stage? Same, the same situation again. People sit in the audience and even if they're not using their phone, sometimes they'll sit there with it on. And this is a light. It's dark. The light, the person next to you, people can see it. It's distracting. I can see it from the stage. I don't want to see it. And every show, I have problems with that. So lately, I've been doing, when I'm hosting the show, I'm introduced. And uh, I'll say, good evening, turn off your cell phones. Thanks for coming, turn off your cell phones. Uh, welcome to the comments on Turn Up Yourself Up. Why did I have to say that three times? Because in 2013, we are still having problems with people activating their problems in the show. It's rude, it's annoying, distracting, and uh, if you have a cell phone, shoot yourself in the face. But first, turn it off, because it's really hard to turn something off when your face is all shut up. But I, I mean, you should you should be here when I have to get in somebody's, really get in somebody's face about it. And uh, I've been the strip last week. A woman sat there and bones on. I said, "Can you please turn it off?" I got kids. Oh really? You got kids? So what did you do 20 years ago? Well, I didn't have kids 20 years ago. Oh, this stupid face. Shut up. Don't talk to me. No more. Just you know, if you if you're coming out the house and you can't afford to spend an hour and a half uninterrupted, then you shouldn't be there. Go be with your kids. But nobody, people walking down the street, staring at the phones, they're, they're, they're everywhere you go. It doesn't matter. I've seen couples just walking down the street, holding hands with this one, and, and having a phone on the other hand. Why are you there? Why are you with somebody to make us pay attention to? But people think that they can multitask, and they suck at it. They suck donkey balls at it. And I think that was one of my suggestions was, uh, at the top of every hour of the game, just take a five minute break, everybody go to the phone, do what they have to do. Up to five minutes. That way, 
we don't have to worry about telling you when it's your turn to do something. I mean, focus and enjoy has been one of our mantras at the beginning. We started playing well with focus and then enjoy. The focus was always first. And since these things came in, that's gone right out the window. And the main culprit is the host. So I can only say so much because it's his house. But if it was just him, I probably would have much of a problem. But since he's doing it, other people started doing it, and they're showing videos during the game. Check this. No, don't check that out. Check it out after the game. Check it out before the game, not during the game. This is poker. This is five hours every week where we get to. <laughs> don't have to do nothing but focus on playing poker. And <clears throat> I was, you know, I was ready to quit again. But uh, they, 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 they behave themselves at the last game. So. I know you don't like to reflect on the past mm -hmm. and you like to live the moment. I, I can appreciate that. But I, I just want to go back to the 30 years. Of time. That's heavy duty. That's, that's. Doing something you love. For 30 years, yeah. And most people, who are, when they do something 30 years, they're, they're, they're either retired or, or thinking about it. I'm not even thinking about it. I'm going right up to the end. I hope. Hopefully my last words will be thank you and good night. And then drop in on the stage. If, if that spot, if I could work it out like that, I would. I would definitely uh, have no problem ending my time with this girl on stage. Because it's so, it's, it's the kind of fun that I can't really describe to people who don't get up on stage. Hey, buddy. Um, so, 30 years, in a sense, is a long time. Go We're back to what you just said. You, it's the kind of fun you can't really describe for people who don't get up on the stage. Stay. Describe that feeling, a little bit about that. <laughs> oh, describe what I can? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, because you are holding, it's almost as if you, you've got these people held captive. No, they, you can they, they, they do have, with them with, what you would want. They have decided they're going to spend a certain amount of money for a certain amount of time. Nobody holds the cap. I've seen people get up and leave. Not when I'm on stage. But I've seen other comics do or say stuff to uh, make somebody say, look, I don't need any of this shit. But um, it's, I, I can't really compare it to any other feeling other than uh, the looks. Of, sometimes you can see it in their eyes or my favorite thing to see is when somebody is really not trying to laugh. In other words, they, they come some sometimes they come and sit like this, like, man, he ain't gonna make me laugh. Now I'm tougher than you think. And then you see them slowly break down and what you really what I want to do to people is to make them lean forward and shut them. just the whole body starts shaking and jiggling. And it's, it's an uncontrollable thing. And it's, it's magic. That's what it is. And for me, I, I think in, as far as entertainment, in, entertainment uh, for an actor or a comedian, the, the difference is between acting and being a comedian. When you're acting, you know, you generally have a live audience. Sometimes you the generally don't. And whatever you're working on, you don't get to see for months at a time. The thing about stand-up is the feedback is immediate, good or bad. It's right there in your face and you can't, you can't uh, alter it. You can't make it look like what it's not. And, uh, and, and even though you may have worked the same club on the same nights for weeks, months, years, it's never going to be the exact same audience as any other thing. A lot of it's, a lot of the, the, the sounds are the same, but the people are different. And the people from all over the world, I get people down, we get people down here from Finland, Norway, Sweden, a lot of people from Australia. Uh, and it's just the nice feeling to know that you can make people laugh as long as they can speak English. 
That's the only requirement that I have. I don't get into, uh, 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 what do you call it, the, uh, what's your, your target audience, your demographic, your, to me, funny is funny. If, if, if you're a human being and you can speak English, I can make you laugh. Unless, you know, unless you're an asshole. <laughs> Speaking of making people laugh, you wrote an excellent article that was posted on From a Cloud about 9-11. And the article struck me because on um, one of the most difficult days in this city, you were still able to bring comfort to people who laugh. Two days, it was a Tuesday, 9 uh, Thursday, when we had an emergency COVID game Wednesday. It didn't really last that long because a lot of people couldn't make it and there was some sort of threat that the Empire State Building was attacked. So we cut the game short. And then Thursday I hosted the show at the strip and it was, it was the weirdest time that I've ever had because prior to the show I didn't know if I could do it. I didn't know if I could be silly and jokey jokey after such a terrible thing would happen. And the audience was seven people at one large table and their couples scattered around. And uh, getting this weird awkward. But I would say by the time I brought the first act up fifteen minutes later, it was pretty much a normal show. Because it just started the old uh, whatever, just kicked in and I was able to get through it. And I knew at that point that yes, there is comedy after I had to, but I didn't think there, there could be when it first happened. It's pretty profound. Because I think today, being able to laugh is more important than ever. Even with all of you know our technology and all the different things that we have to distract us. There's something about comedy that one-on-one, -on -one, even if you're in the audience with a lot of people, you still feel like you're having this individual experience. And we still need that. Oh, definitely more than that, because with all this, all these smartphones and stuff that you don't really need people, but you do need people. And we are being taught or trying to be trained to not rely on human contact and that's the beginning of the end right there. So that's why I uh, I get so I get so upset with people. I paid a cover charge to come see a show and then don't watch the show. There was a cartoon the other day of some image that I saw where it was a concert and Instead of people sitting there watching the show, they were all they all taking pictures of recorded with you're right there. Why not enjoy it while you're there? Everybody wants to save everything, everybody wants to video. People are posting pictures of a plate of food that they're eating, an outfit they just bought. Really? Uh, I don't know how many pictures of kids on the first day of school. I don't know your kid. If, if it was a, if it was somebody that I knew or related to, I might get some out. Just randomly posting pictures of every damn thing you do, get kind of ridiculous. And I don't, I don't know if we're doing that, but we don't look like it's going to be I, I mean, you know, I, I, I love my phone, and if I leave the house without it, I would probably go back and get it if I had time. But I don't. I don't, you know, I don't feel if I didn't have it there, I'm missing out on anything important. Because, really, that's another thing I was going to bring up uh, in, a, in a hammer down that I didn't send. Was uh, if anybody at the table can tell me a good reason why they need their phone in front of them at all, then I said, you know what, fuck that, you can't. So I'm not even going to go there. There's no, I can't, there's no reason you can tell me that are going to make me say, oh, I see why you need to prop your phone up and stare at it. And even if, oh, it's your bet. Yeah, it's not my job to tell you it's your bet. 
supposed to be you know, minding your own P's and Q's, whatever they are. Mind them. When you think about the old school comedians, which ones inspired you? Like, who did you think were funny from, you know? Well, I have. Pre Eddie Murphy, you know, pre Richard Pryor. Okay, then if you're going before Richard Pryor, then definitely George Carlin and Bill Cosby. I don't know which one I would put first. Both of them I found hilarious on shows like Ed Sullivan. Uh, and Flip Wilson a lot too. Um, I, they they hit spots in me I didn't know I had. I mean, I, I used to laugh at them so my stomach would hurt, just crying. And at the time, I, I didn't think that it was something that I would want to do. But I do remember the feeling. And and then once I got to a point where, oh, I have to grow up now and get a job. Well, what kind of work do I want to do? I want to do the kind of work that's really not work. So what can I do? Well, I was the class clown in high school. So there's some training for you right there. <laughs> and you know, people, I think everybody can do something really well. And I think the key is finding it early enough so you can get good at it. I mean, and you can focus on it. Because a lot of people don't know what they're capable of. Because uh, they think that they need to go to college and get a job and cute clothes and wear a tie. And, oh, I, I hate ties. I hate suits. That's why I never even tried to put a set together for Letterman because he requests the comedians to wear a suit. And I don't feel funny in the suit. And I won't do it. Our last question today. Really? It is, if you got a call uh, to perform on a spaceship, <laughs> going to Mars, but well, they're doing they it on planes now. Yes, yes. Well, we're going to space now. And landing on Mars, would you take the view? Yeah, if it was paying, but I, you know, I think I was paying gig, should pay. And <laughs> I had reasonable uh, belief that I would make it back. Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. You know, I would do I'd do it without doing a show, actually. But uh, I, I'm not. I don't think they're ready to do it now safely uh, on a regular basis. I mean, they can't make planes land on time now. So I, I, I shudder to think what's going to happen out in space. Taking your shoes off, you have to be butt naked to get on a plane out of space. <laughs> 